The only surgeons that don't get complications are the surgeons that don't operate. My name is Dr. Rich Hills and you're watching my channel, Knife Skills. And today I wanna to talk about errors in the operating room. Yes. Patients deserve to expect that their time in the hospital is gonna go without serious complication or error. Very often people compare the complexity of the healthcare system to the aviation industry. And in many ways that analogy does hold. Certainly the act of flying itself is by its very nature high risk. Suspending an aircraft fuselage in the air simply by its wings cutting through the atmosphere has its own inherent risks. And certainly early in the aviation industry, there were many crashes and that reflected the high risk nature of flying. Over time though, with analysis, the airline industry has become the exemplar of what's known as a high reliability organization. An organization that works in an area of high risk, but has very few negative outcomes. And our goal in healthcare is to achieve the exact same thing. A few months ago, I made a video really debunking one of Jordan Peterson's claims that there are hundreds of thousands of deaths caused by doctors every year due to medical error. And I think it's a great video for you to take a look at because that really misunderstands the nature of healthcare completely. Like I said, the analogy between healthcare and aviation is important, but it doesn't completely hold. Remember, our patients are coming to the operating room extremely sick. It's not dissimilar to an aircraft that's already in a nosedive or an aircraft that's stalling. There's the right way to respond to that situation. And a simple error can fail to rescue that situation. The pilots who are facing a situation of a nosedive or a spin have only moments to make the exact right decision to correct the course of the aircraft. And every time a patient comes to the operating room when we're dealing with the crisis of an emergency surgery, we're faced with a similar crisis. It takes exactly the right decision at the right time for us to correct this crashing, ultimately nose diving patient. Now, I think the pilots who fail to correct the action certainly deserve responsibility for that. In the same way, doctors that fail to act in the exact right way at the exact right time when taking care of patients are responsible in part for the ultimate outcome. But we do need to understand that medical care oftentimes is on an absolute razor's edge. And very often there's not an exact perfect decision to be made at the exact right time. So errors do happen. They happen in the operating room on a regular basis. And I do think there's a number of strategies that we employ as medical professionals to improve the quality of our outcomes. And I think those strategies can be applied no matter what industry you're in. If you're interested in becoming a doctor or working in an environment where there's high stakes and high risk, I think these four strategies that I'm gonna talk about are incredibly useful for your own experience. So let's get started. Number one, it's anticipate. Recognize that when you're working in an environment that is high risk, that there are multiple different things that can go wrong. In the healthcare system, one thing that we've started in the last 15 years is this concept of checklists. In fact, I've had opportunity to write and publish my own surgical safety checklist for specific environments, and I'll put a link in the description below. But the idea is, is that these checklists give you an opportunity to anticipate what might be going on. Is there gonna be unexpected blood loss? Is there potentially a piece of equipment that we might need that would be hard to get or source? What are the situation of the patient's status going into the operating room? Are, there, are we expecting there to be a big change in their physiology? And by having a checklist going through, it allows you and your team to anticipate potential events in the operating room. Number two, train. When you're dealing with an environment where there are occasional but very serious risks, it's important to simulate and train those things. Very often, we'll be encountering something that we've never seen before, and only by training those situations can we be ready for that event. A good example of this would be a fire in the operating room. It happens very rarely, but it's an extremely serious event. The high oxygen concentrations that are used during anesthesia can fuel a flame. The patients themselves are under anesthetic and can't respond or react to the fire that might be occurring. And of course, the instruments that we use in and of themselves can cause sparks and generate flames. So being prepared for this unusual event is critical for the patient's outcome as well as the safety of the staff in the operating room. Number three, ask for help. When you're in a situation where a potential error is occurring or there's a difficult decision-making or maybe you're faced with a challenge that might be beyond your skills, sometimes the temptation is to try to do it on your own. But the literature tells us when we look at medical legal cases, very often one of the biggest criticisms that doctors have is a failure to ask for help. 
we actually usually plan to have our most complicated and difficult operations occur during the day. We want the most number of staff in the hospital available if a complication were to occur during a very difficult operation. And that's just good practice. So being able to ask for help, being humble enough to ask for help in those moments is a critical key to having good outcomes when things go wrong. Number four, debrief. Whenever you've had a bad outcome or something's gone wrong, it's really important to bring all the people that were involved together. Maybe somebody saw something and didn't speak up, or maybe there's an opportunity for everyone in the situation to learn from an unexpected outcome. In surgery, we call these morbidity and mortality rounds. Morbidity occurs when something unexpected happens that harms a patient. And mortalities can happen even in expected cases and they're worthwhile discussing. We've even used newer terminology like quality assurance rounds to ensure that there's really no negative feelings going into these types of environments. It's really important to have all the doctors together and talk in a free and open and non-judgmental manner in order for there to be learning. The idea that rounds are focused rather than on blame, but rather on learning is a critical aspect of the debrief. And I think it's important for all leaders, medical or otherwise, in your organization to build a culture where debrief is common and comfortable. There are a number of different ways you can optimize your organization to deal with errors. And I think these four are really important. They're the ones that definitely come to mind. I'd be really interested though, if you have any ideas of what you think would be an excellent additional strategy to both reduce errors, learn from errors, and improve the overall quality of the work provided by your organization. Once again, my name is Dr. Rich Hillsden. You've been watching Nice Skills, and thank you for watching.